Hey everyone, Dan here. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. And keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence. Put in the work for yourself and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, folks, here we are on Tuesday, January 9th. We're going to take a look at CGC today. So CGC had this reverse split toward the end of the year and uh, obviously was falling well before that and left a gap. And so I figured we'd come in and sort of recreate the chart since the levels all broke along with the price change, if you will, <laughs> and um, put a few levels on and then check in on the Think or Swim study and call it a video. Now, I know for the time being, it's putting in a few bottoms here, right around, say, 446 or so. Um, but the stronger level to me actually looks like this 5, which is quite far away. But this chart just kind of gets cluttered so quickly, um, unless we zoom in quite a bit. So let's put it on, and we'll see if it's bothersome or not. Um, yeah, we'll put it at 450. And because uh, otherwise, I mean, that's such a huge percentage gap to leave, you know, no support or resistance levels in when they're actually there, but not wanting to clutter the chart. Sometimes we get a little bit uh, too few levels in there. Now, let me take a look at these. OK, so I'm going to shift both of these purple. And the reason is there's a gap there, but there but those levels to my eye are also support and resistance levels. So if we didn't have them in here as gap, we would have them in here as uh, support and resistance. So I think that, you know, it might be one of those situations where, you know, absent of some major catalyst that's sort of like thrusting the stock um, that direction, you know, it might get kind of sticky to, to even try to get into the gap, like it might treat the gap entry point as a resistance level. So we'll see. Um, but okay, now this feels cluttered enough to me. So if we zoom in here a bit, um, you know, the nearest in level, as I see it, 450. Um, if it needs support there, that's where I would look for it. Um, and if it loses that, then, you know, there's not a really great level um, besides this 386, um, you know, that stemming back here. Um, you see it sort of did a good job catching this free fall and then building ultimately for this big push. So we'll see how that sort of holds up or how it plays out if it even goes down there. Now, if it does start to rise, then 501, basically the battle for five, makes sense. 530, looks like it's catching a lot of price action um, in recent days. 562, right? So some of these are like definitely off kilter from psychological levels, if you will. And then it enters this gap right at about 599. So then you'd have maybe the battle for six, you know, maybe that's sort of why there's a level there as well. And then it wouldn't fill it until it got all the way to about 678. So pretty monster move if it does come to fill the gap. You know, that said, while it does happen often, it doesn't have to happen. And if it does happen, who knows the time frame, right? Is it going to happen relatively soon? Is it going to take months or years to play out? You know, that's always the question. But I like to put the gaps on there, especially after something that's been sort of like under major distress yet has the uh, option or has the proven <laughs> ability to become very volatile very quickly and move strongly in both directions. So those are the levels as I see it now on the think or swim side of things. Uh, you see that big push here, got it well out of the channel and it just couldn't hold. I mean, that's, you know, that would take pretty significant continuous buying pressure to hold that level of activity outside of the upper bound of the gap, uh, or sorry, outside the upper bound of the channel. And so, you know, came back in, tried to hold off of the upper bound, um, but then just fell into test the mid-range. That resulted in it pinning itself between the mid-range and the lower bound. And then we had this interesting period here where it was pinning itself to mid-range of the channel and starting to trigger on the TTM squeeze indicator, which is my favorite setup. Not only that, it had recently died off all of the bearish momentum, so it was sitting at the baseline on the histogram. We had a little punch up when it started to fire, pressed the upper bound of the channel a few times, and then basically gave up and then gapped down um, 
and has is once again now pinned between the lower bound of the channel and the mid range. So kind of looking for something to evolve on here. Right now it's just kind of a whole lot of nothing. I mean, if we look at this space here, like I said, histogram had died down to baseline and then just a little blip up. And now, you know, definitely a stronger blip down, if you will, but that's looking like it's already maybe going to dwindle off and the bearish momentum is also going to die down. We'll see. I mean, obviously it can throw hiccup candles in there, if you will, which are like a candle that's out of place. Um, but this is quite a few hiccup candles. That said, you know, we, we we're just talking about how CGC can be very volatile. And so who knows what could happen that could throw this strongly in one direction or the other catalyst wise. Um, but that's just, you know, to my eye, what the histogram and the play in the channel looks like currently. Now, if it does start to repin itself to the mid range of the channel, I would look for maybe another trigger to start taking place. Because while I know that this was kind of a big move, you know, in air quotes, I don't know that this was really the move. I'm kind of wondering if it might re-trigger and re-fire, and we might get the real move. Now, the question on a move is always, which direction is it going to go? And, you know, not having a crystal ball or um, those sorts of supernatural powers, I don't know. <laughs> so we just kind of have to wait and see what's happening. But that wouldn't shock me um, if we do get a, a, a new trigger taking place because sometimes we get a trigger and a fire and, and sort of nothing really happens or we could gauge it as nothing really happened. And then when we get the re-trigger and the re-fire, that's when the real, real big move comes. So maybe that'll take place now that it's trying to hold back toward the mid-range of the channel, but it's really going to have to work to sustain that level because that is right around five at the moment. Now it's going to continue to drag down as it puts in new candles because this channel is dynamic. So at some point they may collide even if this doesn't do a whole lot of climbing, but we'll have to see if it, if it can even hold this area in order to do so. But that's something I may be watching for to see if it takes place. Again, not saying it will, but just if it does, could get interesting. All right, folks, I hope that your trading week is off to a good start. And as always, I appreciate you watching and I will see you in the next video.